Since I have returned to my hometown, where I went to junior high and high school, I've had a, well, I've had two, two flashback memories, memory flashback thingies. They keep happening, just, bam. I don't know why. Man, I, uh, obviously I need to process something. Part of me thinks I'm supposed to write the story down, but there's so much there. Sometimes my hands and my brain don't want to focus enough to write. And that's very frustrating, too. But you get used to these things in life. And you have to figure out a new way to do things. I think I've shared this one, this, this one memory with you. <laughs> I think I've shared this one memory with you before. But first, let's go back to the first one. Um, man. As you can tell, I'm struggling a little bit today. that. I can't get the stories out. And then they stay inside of you and they just bounce around. Stories, memories, for me it's all the same thing. It's how I process. Sometimes I get hit with the overwhelming flashback. And I have to try and breathe. Because they're so real. Still. Steel. Steel. There goes the redneck in me. I remember my mom and I were going to the general store in Melroy. It's dead inside in the novel, but you all get that by now. Mom had bought me an ice cream cone. Her and Pop had been fighting. This was during his alcohol. <sighs> the end of his alcoholism. And, um, fuck, it was bad. And Mom was bad. She was drinking heavily, too, and living in a... She wasn't living with us. Her and Pop got in a fight. Again. So she moved into this roach-infested hotel. There's not that many of them in Milroy, but the, this one was a fucking overwhelming hotel. Roaches and stench. And she stayed there while she did her thing. But she would come over periodically and grab me. I love my time with my mom. Doesn't happen that often. And um, we got an ice cream cone at the general store. We were walking back. I think... To, my, to the house. Maybe mom was living with us. Fuck, I don't know. I think she was living with us, and this was right before she got kicked out. Because <laughs> we walked home, and every time we came in the house, her and Pop would fucking go at it, man. Pop usually drunk, and who knows what mom was doing. But... So anyway, we're walking back home, and there I am, just licking an ice cream cone, being a kid. As I've mentioned before, Mom was a hellraiser. <laughs> Spitfire hellraiser. I don't know what she did to this woman, but the woman was across the street by the barber shop and screamed something at my mom that was pretty bad. Can't remember. But my mom had this face where she, she would just go stone cold, ice fucking cold. <laughs> and then she'd beat the shit out of somebody. <laughs> And my mom walked across the street, and this woman came after her. Right in the middle of the street, my mom clocked her and then gave her a hip throw onto the road. Traffic stops. And proceeds to sit down on this woman's chair. And they are going and cussing as this is happening. And mom didn't. I think mom's shirt got ripped, so her titties hanging out or some shit like that. And the other woman's a bloody mess. And mom sits on her chest. 
And every time that woman says something like, you can't snatch a poosh, mine went poosh. And this went on for a couple of minutes. And there I am just licking my ice cream because I'm so fucking used to this kind of shit. Doesn't even shock me anymore. I'm just there. There's my mom in the middle of the street with a titty hanging out, beating some other woman. Yep, that's us. That's what we do. yee The local butcher, I think the butcher shop was behind me, barber shop was over there, came out and tried to pick my mom up, and I think she even got a couple of shots on him. He's a big dude. By the time we... So the woman gets up, my mom's titty's hanging out, and she's all bloody fucking mess. Traffic stopped. People are just loving this shit in our small, small town. My mom was a lot of fuel for small town talk. Ironically enough, when I grew up, so was I. I don't know why I keep having that, especially that flashback of her just in the road beating the shit out of that woman. But it, it... I won't go away. I remember we got home and the like, phone was already exploding. There was already several stories of Mom almost killed this woman. And then it's small town talk, you know. Huge fight broke out again with Mom and Pop. She took off again. But she came home later on. Now, this is it. She came home, fuck. She came home later on that day and tried to cook a meal for Pop and I. Pop, being on a three-day bender, thankfully he wasn't gone driving, though. He stayed home and did the bender. And, uh... Pop fell down the stairs. We heard him tumble. And he laid on the floor. <sighs> House smelled of piss and shit. I remember at first he wasn't breathing. And we walked up and just sat there, just stood there. I finally said, Is he dead? Mom just stood there. I don't know, I don't know. He started breathing, and so she said, just leave him there. He'll, he'll sober up. He, he wound up crawling from the stairs to the, to the living room, right by his chair, and there he laid for two more days. I sat there and watched TV, cartoons, as my grandfather was in the background, pissing shit. Finally, some friends came over and saw how bad it was and put him in the hospital. ER came, er, sorry, this is, this is not easy. He went into the hospital and they had to drill holes in the side of his head to relieve pressure. He was never quite the same after that. When he came back home, it was months later, Mom and I vanished again, I think, to Kentucky for a while or something, I don't know. When he came back home, and he was very frail. And her, my mom and him could never get along. They fought one night over burnt beans. Kicked Mom out. She went to live in that roach and busted shithole which was going to be a theme of ours when we took off to the west. Roach-infested shitholes. But he kicked Mom out. A month or so later, she came to school. I was in the fourth grade. He pulled me out of a very happy hometown. Even though Pop was bad, the hometown still took care of me. she took me out west. You all know that story if you've listened to me ramble for years or read the book or whatnot. 
I keep having the flashback of mom being in that room. The top just laying on that floor. And There are some things in life you cannot control. It's easy as that. You are a part of the life, but you can't control any of it. And you just have to do the best you can. I think the voice kept telling me that when I was a kid. Just do the best you can, big guy. I guess that's why I can't write. I don't write like the old alcoholic that wanted to have a romantic death, self-destruct, and not deal with all this shit. Just die and move on. But he didn't. And so now I'm trying to find that new narrator. And I got the stories and stuff for the new book. There's a struggle inside of me of the old me wants to tell the story how it used to be told. But I don't drink anymore. Hell, I've been out of weed for a while. Gotta get some, but it's hard to barter and trade in the Midwest. Gotta have that money thing. Work hard. Be angry. If you're happy, you're not working hard enough. That's the Midwest. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that's what the Midwest is. So I sit here and deal with my demons by going, okay, why do I keep having this fucking flashback of my mom beating somebody in the middle of the fucking road? Why do I keep seeing my grandfather right before he sobered up? I don't know yet, but I got to keep busy and keep the brain going and keep moving forward to figure this stuff out because the stuff doesn't figure itself out. All right, well, there we go. Ramble done for now. Get off me. We all process differently. This is how I process, and this is how I've always done it. I've been alone most of my life, even when I was a kid. <laughs> it was safer that way, and that was pretty much the life I had. So when you're alone all your life, you learn to just suck it up and deal with it. But you got to make sure you find a beautiful balance because if you suck it up and deal with it too much and don't let it out, it'll eat you alive. And uh, that's no way to live. Get off me, fly. All right, I'm going to skull fuck this goddamn fly. It's driving me crazy. <laughs>